to start to have those disciplines and the baby continue to have that when they arrive to young people or when they arrive to adults uh, and when they choose a companion if it's the same disciplines we transmit it to the new generation all of those disciplines and each generation became better and better than the other then we are going to put the hair from Veronica uh, after we put the hair many changes happen in his life uh, how conceive the life how do they speak many changes because hair hair is related with many activities that we do we say that they are Nazarian and it helps if they arrive to become a leader from the uh, from the human beings uh, when they arrive to be an adult it helps so much also uh, to become a leader and to help to develop the human beings then Veronica we say you congratulations for this step in your life and also thank you to your father and to your brother to share with you this moment <laughs> She's always going to be my. You're always going to be my sweetie pie. <laughs> you're going to be a different sweetie pie now. <laughs> so you know it's that passage of little girl, very little girl, into a, beginning to be a young lady. So it's, it's a, a time of joy and sorrow for me. <laughs> and uh, when you talk about her uh, being able to be a leader of humanity and bringing something special, that makes me feel very proud. Proud of you. And that's, uh, that's the most that I can want as a father is to, for her, for you, Veronica, to be happy and healthy and to contribute to the human race, to bring something to humanity. And I know you will. Thank you. Yeah. This is the thing that Bobby would say to Veronica. Veronica, you're important. I'm very proud of her, and I feel very lucky that she never tried to connect herself. <laughs> because I know some other kids in GGB who have done themselves. So I was just like, wow, well, she never really touched it. So that was really good. And um, again, I, I wish for her to be one of those leaders that we need in this world. Uh, good job. <laughs> <laughs> good job, Panaka, that you have. Thank you very much. Luis, we know that you are expanded your home, that it's going to be bigger. And yesterday we have a workshop about all <laughs> yeah, the things. And then Sylvia tell me to recommend it at the same time that they expanded the house to have new furniture for all the houses. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we want to receive you. Money is coming. Well, we can thank George W. Bush. After, after the closing ceremony, uh, we have a an story, and also the Yellow Fan say always thank you to everyone who shared uh, with him, because you helped in his building, uh, what does he need to do around the world. Uh, do you remember that last year, and also many years, we have, with all, sharing with us, uh, Reverend Enrique Medual from Puerto Rico. And, 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 and we have a celebration and 
I want Federico Arpey to speak about about this because we remember with a lot of love uh, Enrique Melbourne. And uh, when uh, I, what I would like to do is to share with you to share that you share whatever they say I would say personally. How was it now? He's carrying his suitcase, going to you know, wherever he has, she is, and uh, smiling because he's not sure. It was his great jacket, you know, the square with a little square, blue square, with yellow suitcase, and his big smile. Oh, and when one day we were in Canada, and it was about six weeks below. I don't even remember. It was in Montreal. It was in Montreal. It was really cold. And here he was with his light pants, you know, his polyester pants, his, that same jacket where, I mean, it was really light jacket. And, and he never let anyone to help him with his, his luggage. He wanted to carry it by himself. He always was so uh, independent in that uh, matter. And I said, no, 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 thank you, I can do it. And he, I mean, in that call, he was like, I mean, I think he has been always in that call. I mean, he had mentally ready to adapt himself to whatever it was. The situation was so for me. It really was like a, an example. He said, if I want to be any any age, I want to be like it. I want to be happy. I want to be um, light. And I think for me, he was really an example of of willing, of uh, adaptation, of happiness, and, and I think that was wonderful to continue to, to be able to share time with you. Thank you. Yeah. Any other, any other, any body that you mentioned about nice speaking with you? I could say something. I didn't know him very well at all. I only met him at these, you know, uh, and when he came here, I asked Diane yesterday, I said, how is Bernard and Vicky coming? I didn't know you were passing away. And uh, I was so disappointed that he wasn't going to be here, I guess, because he had the best energy. And it, I was always inspired by the fact that he could sit on the floor in his 90s, and, you know, I'm in my 50s, and I can foresee a time when that's, I'm not going to make it to the 90s to do that. So I was always very impressed by that. And it's just because he had lots of energy. Uh, his energy was lovely. Love. He had good energy like when we were around. You know, no, I, I just talked to him a little bit a few times, but maybe a language barrier or something. I couldn't, you know, speak more than that. You know. <laughs> but that little bit I knew. I, I even I thought of him enough before I even came here. Just a beautiful individual 
Um, and he was very interested in everybody. Even though he wouldn't know you, he would, he would be like a brother. He would just immediately want to know you much more, much more. So I, I appreciated that about him, his warm heart, his kind demeanor, and his interest in humankind, whether it was maybe a stranger on the street or somebody here at the retreat. He was just wanting to extend himself in any way that he could. So that was my impression. And I know he'll be sorely missed by many people because of that. And the brotherhood spirit. Like the what was his birth story? I don't know. I'm not even with 96. 96, but he died. But I'm not even with 96. Well, it's, um, Uh, 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 Elena says something that is pretty that is, uh, this is, uh, for me, in my opinion, he was very clear and uh, distinct sample of a person that touches the soul and the heart of other people just because he's a state of him. He was a very clear sample of that. And Elena says a key word. He inspired happiness. If he says any single word to describe Reverend Enrique was happiness. He was a happy man. And wherever he goes, he really shared the, the inspired happiness. He was a happy man. He was a very happy to see anybody, anybody, a kind to that person. And that's the way I describe it, happiness. Uh, the reason I like to, uh, to tell you about this story is because there was something very interesting that happened between Enrique and I right before he died. Enrique, he, uh, for many years, he always called me to help to tell me about his plan. So I want like in a way the liaison of Enrique, like a barista, he can tell me his plan. The barista, he come to St. Louis, he called me, he says, tell them that I'm going there, and this is my arrival time, and this is all of that. So I called the young, and say, Enrique come at this time. And so oh, when he goes to Mexico, wherever he goes, I would be the only one, to, the first one to find out where he go. So he has a lot of trust on me and confidence that I will call that place and make sure that he's going to be picked up and he's going to be well received and taken care of. That was the relationship we have with Mr. Enrique. So the last time so I spoke with Enrique was two weeks before he died, in the middle of January. He dies at the end of that month in January. I believe it's 29th of January. And uh, so he called me, and he says, uh, Reverend Arby, I just want to tell you something. He says, my legs hurt. I decided I'm not going to be traveling anymore to the United States or to Mexico. I'm not going to be traveling abroad. I don't think it's proper for me to continue traveling. I said, so uh, what are you going to do now? He said, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, um, and, um, and limited my traveling just by going to Maya West. Enrique lived in San Juan. Maya West is two and a half hours by car from Maya West. And he always meet every month or every 15 days with the brothers over there. They had uh, meetings of the tours. And uh, he will always go and he will only try. He said, that's what I keep doing. I'm going to keep doing that. Yes, I'm going to try to match it with it. That's as far as I could go. And that moment, it was a feeling, a very like a in, intuitive feeling that I, I felt. I shocked me. I said, he's going to be gone very fast. So I told him, Enrique, uh, I know that 
you feel like no trouble and you have the reputation, I'm going to go to Terra and I'm going to be you. If you don't come to us or 